Welcome to another episode of the Element Podcast. My name is Eskia, and today we have such a special guest, my homie Jordan Hunter. Jordan and I have been friends now for a couple years, and I'm excited for you guys to check out this conversation. It's a really, really good one. Uh, we get into how his faith in God actually drives him forward in life, and we also talk about his experience in the military, uh, as well as uh, some of his pursuits that are coming up in the future. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Jordan and his Element. Yo, welcome everybody to the Element Podcast. My name is Askia, and I'm here with my homeboy. Mr. Introduce your dress up. Mr. 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 Honored to be in your presence, but my name is Jordan Hunter. Yes, sir. I love it, man. Thanks for coming through. Damn it, Especially bro. on such short notice. Of I had course. to get you when I saw that you're in Phoenix. I was just like, pull up. Hey, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be in the presence and we live close to each other. So it was like, I got you. I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna hey, pop man, up. Amen, bro. Hey man, what you uh, how you feeling today? What's going on? What's good? It's just it's always a it's always a good reminder when you come home and, and just get to like reconnect and mm. drive down some of the streets and hang out with a couple people. Um, so I'm feeling good, you know. It's like a, I enjoy to come home. It's a mm. quick recharge, and then I go back out into the extroverted Los Angeles. Yeah, man. So how long have you been out there? This would be four years as of October. I've been in LA. Um, I've been in California ten years though. Okay. Because I was in San Diego for five prior. Yeah. Well, take us to the beginning, bro. Where are you from? Tell us about. <clears throat> tell us about. Take Straight us to the start Compton, of time, no, baby. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> Straight out of Compton, dog. No, I, uh, I love it. Yeah, you know, I feel like there's there's only a, a select generation of us Mohicans. I am originally a Phoenician. Yep. Uh, born yep. and raised in Phoenix, uh, Central Phoenix, East Phoenix ish. Um, took it to 20 years old. Graduated from North High School, and um, I wanted to go to college for swimming. Didn't get many opportunities. Wanted to go to HBCU. Didn't have the finances to do so. Um, so I thought community college, figure it out. Got bored of that very fast. And uh, I discovered at that time I wasn't, um, looking back, I wasn't focused on school. I was more focused on the social aspect of I'm growing up and I want to be in new spaces and around new people all the time. Yeah. And uh, that took me to the Navy at 20 years old. And mm. I, I left in 2012. Joined the United States Navy. That took me from Chicago for boot camp to Florida for a year. And then I moved to San Diego 2013. No. Ooh, public math. 2014. <laughs> 13 or 14. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I was in the Navy from 2012 until 2018. And then that's what took me to from San Diego to Los Angeles. And I've been there ever since. That's amazing, bro. So what were like? what was it like bouncing around from place to place and like interacting with different people? Was that... Was it pretty obvious that no matter like where you were, there were like the people, the vibe, the energy was significantly different? Yeah, you know, it's like um, <clears throat> I feel like being an only child, I've always been comfortable being mm. uncomfortable when it mm. comes to like if I walk in a room nine times out of ten, like I, I didn't know people, you know, until I established myself in these rooms until and I was okay with that. You know, as a young and, and just being tall. People instantly are going to look at me or look up like, whoa, he's tall, you know? And so (laughs) I've just been comfortable and used to it. So as I started to navigate these spaces, I mean, going into boot camp, you know, I mean, you get off the, you get off the the bus and you're immediately getting cussed out immediately. Mm. And then you're thrown into a room with 70 other guys, right? Nine times out of 10, you don't know any of them. You don't know where they're from. You don't know anybody. Everybody's gunning for your job. So at that first time, it's like, all right, let's see who, you know, it becomes this alpha instinct, you know? hierarchies um, everybody trying to build where yeah, they sit you know because you don't know like your bunk mate might hate people you know what mm. i'm saying or might, might hate people who've never been around somebody who's african-american um a little back i mean a little bit to that i i was a swimmer i did search and rescue swimming in the united states navy so i mean i i didn't see another me until i made it to the to my the fleet or my job you know and um so yeah so i mean bouncing around different spaces you get used to being a representative, you know, and, and I, I, I took a lot of pride being from Phoenix. A lot of people are always like, wow, you're the first person I ever met from Phoenix. Or you're the first black person I ever met from Phoenix. Right. And so you get used to that really fast. Um, but yeah, I just learned to just appreciate the rooms I was invited to. Mm-hmm. And I learned to learn what I could. Mm-hmm. And when I was supposed to talk a lot and when I wasn't supposed to talk and I was supposed to just listen and, you know. Just be humble for being in rooms. Mm. And that's something looking back because then, you know, obviously it was, you know, insecure about being in spots and 
friends sure. going to get degrees and I'm sitting in rooms with people with masters and I'm like, dang, I didn't even make it through my associates. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, it became like being a firm and where I'm at. Yeah. And that's huge. And that plays a big role in like the confidence of people to be able to operate wherever it is that they may sit. Is that um, is that confidence? So then do you find that a lot of that confidence comes from, I know you're a man of God, like your faith, your idea of yourself. Does a lot of the confidence to be able to step into those rooms, to step into those spaces, derive from that? Yeah, man, listen, you <laughs> hit it on the nail. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I would say I was born and raised in the church, and mm-hmm. I would always say that I, I've been a man of God. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say I intentionally really started to like understand what that was. While in the Navy, I started to like sharpen my sense of identity. Right. Um, I would say like... Well, let me see. 2000 and going back a little bit, public math again. 2005. Okay. Um, I gave my life back to Christ, yeah. and and that same year went to a um, like a teen uh, church retreat right. at Creflo Dollar Church in Texas. Got manifested in the Word of Tongues, and then I would say, all, like I said, all the way through high school, like you know, I was always, yeah, I'm a Christian, but like I didn't trust the prayer like I, I didn't know what i didn't know if that makes sense right so when i joined the navy fast forwarding again i got back into intentionally like reading and and praying and and really falling in on the word and the promises mm. and expectations and so a lot of it became like i still get shocked sometimes to this day where people are like hey can you come do this and i'm like oh my gosh yeah how do they call me and then i'm like god my bad yeah, you know what i'm saying exactly. you know and exactly. yeah so i always lead in with that when people ask me um, you know, who represents you in LA? And I'm like, I got God. It's just, it's just me and God. He's <laughs> the best up. manager, agent, PR. Exactly. Exactly. I don't have any, you know, it's, it's me and him and, and the people he puts around me. So yeah. in this present day, yes, mm-hmm. I know what it is. Then I didn't know. Looking back, yes. Right. Retrospect, perspective. Right. You can assign that this was yeah. an act of. It okay. was an assignment. It was a chapter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. What uh, What are you up to in LA right now? Man, so I sell uh, Q-tips to pharmaceutical companies, and uh, no, I'm kidding. I can't even hold that. No, nah, man, so I uh, I moved out to L.A. Uh, yeah, I sell Q-tips for a second, to pharmaceutical bro. companies. For a second, bro. For a second. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I went into a marketing degree. And, yeah, uh, no. exactly. Yeah, no, I got out of the Navy 2018, and um, God told me it was time for my chapter um, to move to L.A., yeah. and I was going to be an actor. Mm. Um, at the time I thought that's all I was going to do. So, you know, when I first got there, I mean, it was head down, audition, 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 class, audition, 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 work, audition, like nothing else mattered except working. And then, um, acting became obviously what I love to do. Mm. Um, and I heard a sermon, I want to say 2020 or 2019, Mm -hmm. um, through, uh, Michael Todd with Transformation Church, TC Nation. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was the difference between passion and purpose. Okay. And that's what I really started to kind of prey on and see more and more of like my passion was I enjoy to act. Right. I'm really good at it. You can't tell me I'm not. Right. Um, I've been putting in the work and, and I'm seeing myself grow. But my purpose isn't to be an actor. It's when those cameras go off, mm-hmm. what am I standing for? And I learned that that was aquatic education. Wow. Um, and something around water. And, and um, that's what's literally taking me through my whole life. I mean, looking back in the Navy, I swam before the Navy. I was a swimmer, you know, growing up, I was a swimmer and that already put me in rooms that stereotypically African Americans still aren't in. Right. So to get to LA and now I started a business where I teach kids and adults to swim in the pool and open water because of the comfortability that I grew while I was in the Navy, you Mm -hmm. know, being in Phoenix, we ain't got no oceans, you know? So, Going into my job and getting comfortable being in the open ocean, I'm like, aren't you afraid of sharks? But like, they're not. They're not necessarily always right. focused on us. You know what I'm saying? And right. we're not swimming 300 miles out, out. to just right. swim. We're near right. the you know shoreline, so exactly. you got to deal with stingrays. But exactly. you know that's you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I've been acting four years, um, commercial print, voiceover, mm-hmm. um, and you know, like I said, teaching teaching kids and adults to swim and. That's expanded into triathlons now. Yeah. Tell me about um, the journey of teaching someone to swim, right? So what's sort of that funnel look like? 
Like, where do you find that most people start at? And then, like, what is it that you do to get them to be comfortable swimming? Like, yeah. What does that look like? Wow. Because you just did a That's tour, a bro. Yeah, yeah. You just so, did a tour. My man, you know, he's, doing very, that. he's real humble because he was there for the tour. You know what I'm saying? He got to see, <laughs> he got to see it. I even got him in the water. Huge, you know what I'm saying? Bro, huge. Um, but, yeah, no, I think um, I always approach my adults very very open communication if, yeah. if if you can communicate with me mm-hmm. i can tell you what we're going to do and i know where to meet you right. everything's a recipe and so i try to approach everything the same way the same mechanics mm-hmm. but your fear might not be somebody else's fear right um so i approach everything like therapy um i get them in the water and, and the first time getting in the water i just want them to just be comfortable i want to see what's comfortable can you put your face under the water? Mm. You hold your nose when you go under water. Okay, so let's work on you trusting yourself to just hold your breath. You know, can you kick your feet? You know, I teach everybody that the mechanics of walking, mm-hmm. essentially, when you turn your body to swim, is the same mechanics. Mm. But your mind knows if you're going this way, you're not supposed to be walking anymore. It's like right. it's like if you push right. over a, a toy right. and the, the the legs are still moving. You know, it's just not walking. And so teaching right. the mind. That it's okay to be on this axis versus this axis. Mm-hmm. Um, holding your breath and most importantly, back floating. Um, that's like the most important three pieces. I just gave you guys a free swim lesson. <laughs> Breathing, <laughs> back, stro- or back floating, and kicks. You know, So I right. start everybody there. Those right. are my three. Um, and so to answer your question, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty much meeting them where they are the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, setting up almost like an, a, a baseline of like, you're really good at holding your breath. You're a little nervous with your kicks. Let's strengthen your kicks up. And sometimes that just might be core. Wow. And sometimes that might just be trusting yourself to hold your breath and you're going to kick further than you think before you're going to run out of breath. And when you roll on your back, it's just about trusting yourself to just lay down without the anxiety or twitches mm-hmm. of your fight or flight. You know, um, a lot of our nervous nerve system that goes down our backs, up our necks, as soon as we're laying on our backs, it's kind of like, you know, the only time you see this is when you're falling, you know, right. if you're roller skating. Or, so scary. You know, it's like or, nothing good. Yeah. Or if you're about to trip, your your right. mind instantly goes, I have to flinch up. Yep. And so yep. it's just trusting people to find that comfort, you know. Mm. And so, yeah, so I, I approach everybody, you know, open like, hey, I'm going to roll you on your back. My hand's going to be behind your neck. Mm-hmm. If I feel like you're comfortable, I'm going to remove my hand. But my other hand's still going to be on your back. And sometimes, again, I'm not giving away all my things, but course, sometimes I'll course. release both hands at the same time without telling them. Yeah. Just to see them react without reacting. Exactly. So, yeah. Interesting, man. It's a recipe. So people are, so, and it's beautiful too. Um, some people are, they're, they fear swimming. They fear the water. What's something that you fear? And like how, like recently, how have you dealt with that? Uh, to overcome it or to to work through it if it's still something that's pertinent. Dang man, like we about to get bro. this open, bro. Getting there, bro. Tissues. <laughs> um, nah, man. I mean, to be completely transparent, it's just yeah. being intentional right now of God. Yeah. Um, I think that's like one of the biggest fears is like what I have for my life and like I think I'm doing. Y'all you know, hear that little whisper or I'll hear that loud yell and it'd be like. No, this is what we're doing. And I'm like, nah, bro, come on. You know, so I think it's just pouring out what I thought and allowing more for him to pour in. Yeah. Um, So right now, I think the biggest thing is my next chapter. Mm -hmm. Um, God called me to get ready for school. And in my mind, I'm like, I know what school I'm going to. Mm -hmm. This is what I thought I prayed on and applied for. Um, And now I'm just like nervous in a sense of like, okay, did he want to just see if I was going to do this school? And it's really another school. Am I really going to go to school? Um, he gave me a leave date that, excuse me, I thought I had a leave date from LA. Um, and I'm learning that, you know, who told you that? And I'm like, oh man, like, <laughs> like you know, like I've already started to tell people. And, you know, yeah. I think it's, again, it's me telling people mm-hmm. what I think and not mm-hmm. what he is wanting. Um, so it's just me like kind of working through it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, the trust. The trust. You know, And like it, it seems faith. like it takes like a crazy amount of like intimacy and 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 understanding on like both ways. Yeah. You know? yeah. Which is very scary. Because it's like turning the lights out, you know, and hearing a thousand thumbtacks being thrown right. on the ground. Right. And now they're like walk straight without stepping on one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's how I feel sometimes to give that analogy. It's like yeah. lights are out. You just hear. A, that's nuts. Bro. And then you just hear a voice that says walk to me. 
I just um I tweeted something yesterday, bro. That is like pretty much lines up I heard the, with I think I that, remember this. I think I liked bro, it. I might be on one of the lights. So crazy, man. Let me see. But it was basically talking about comfort zones. Yes. Yeah. And it was like, let me see if I can pull up the thread real quick. Ski's a tweeter of maybe like three to five tweets every like week. So (laughs) this would be pretty quick for him to find. Yeah. (laughs) Literally, bro. (laughs) Literally. I've been on on Twitter since like 09, 10. I probably have like 5,000, bro. (laughs) 5,000? Bro. Oh, you made me like the old Honda Civic. Straight up, bro. I got 258,000. To this day, uh, two fifty eight. Like half of them to re re bro. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I had to I had to delete a lot of them. Yeah, yeah I'm for weak, sure. Bro. I'm weak, bro. <laughs> but yeah, the the tweet read just kind of in line with this that I think would be good for people to hear um, was we stay in the comfort zone because it's what we know, which is like light. It's like the idea of um, when you when you can see things, you know them. Um, but it's the comfort zone because it's like something that we know. Mm. Moving out of the comfort zone is scary because it is the unknown, which is like dark. And it's like the nighttime, the, the not knowing what's going to happen. I'm telling you, like, and, you need with this knowledge. Bro, it's this. nuts, This dog. is free game. And then both dark and light have the capacity for good and evil. So, that's what I, that's, that's the, that was the one that caught me. That was crazy. the one that caught me out. And it's just like, that's a wild thing to sit in, you know? Because mm-hmm. when you not be comfortable in that, but when you know that, it's almost like okay you right. know like you got to be okay with it and right. you know it's my my crazy faith in telling people like you know what i've done and what i have going on and i just have to keep continuing to just believe that you know mm. i can't can't live in fear if i have fear then you know i'll hold on to stuff you know it's like i get paid for something and god's like hey i want you to go you know to this and i'm like ooh, but i'll be broke you right. know what i'm saying or like right. hey i need you to go to this like but then i won't have anything mm. you know and it's almost like do you not trust me Right. And so again, it's that across the room where it's like, come to me, exactly. and it's like, oh, I know there's thumbtacks somewhere all around here, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, and have you previously been in a situation similar to that um, that you got through? So I know you just you've done like um, you know marathon or triathlon you just completed. Was was that a similar feeling? Uh, so I would say that one was more of like. I was just excited to get yeah. it done, man. I did yeah. two in 2020, and I did two in 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, triathlon, for those who don't or may not know all the way through, is four different mileage levels of uh, combinations of swimming, biking, and running. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did the second tier, which was um, a mile in the water, open water swimming, 25 miles on the bike, and then you finish with 6.2 on the run. Oh, nice. Um, that's the Olympic distance. Um, for those who watch the Olympics, that was the, the distance that they do. It's called the International Sprint. The two above that is half Ironman and Ironman. Um, and those are, yeah, I'm not there yet. Maybe this year, who knows. Ironman triathlon is going to be 2.4 miles in the water. Um, and then you go onto your bike, and then you're going to do 112 miles. And you're going to get off that after 112 miles, and you're going to do a marathon. So the average person... I mean, even a marathon runner knows, like, that's four and a half hours by itself. Right. Now, think about, you just got off a bike after 112 miles, which if you're doing 18 to 20 miles an hour, mm-hmm. that might take you, I don't know, I want to guess, five hours, six mm-hmm. hours. And then swimming 2.4 miles, let's say you knock a mile out in, we'll just say 35 minutes. <laughs> Oh so yeah, so That's give or take. Okay. I mean, it's you know, it's it's a it's a all day thing. Yeah. Um, so I do two below that, the Olympic distance. Um, I do have mm-hmm. dreams of getting it done, but I would say to answer your question about you know have I faced something like that prior was when I was getting out of the Navy. Mm. Um, it was time for me to reenlist. My unit was getting ready to go back on deployment. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had deployed with them in 2016, and we were getting ready to go back on deployment 2018. Okay. So it was either re-enlist, go on deployment, come back from deployment, and then rotate to my next station, which would have either been me continuing to fly and help. Okay. I used to fly in helicopters. Yeah, yeah. Um, or go be a recruiter, which is what I wanted to do. Mm. I wanted to do, but God praying on it, praying on it. I, I heard it so specific. If you trust me, get out, and I did. September 17, twenty eighteen, moved to L. A. And a testament to that is September 17th, 2019, Mm -hmm. my one year anniversary of getting out of the Navy was my debut on television on the CW (sighs) network. Bro. 
crazy. That's unreal, dude. Like, filmed Woo! it. They flew me to Miami. We yep. filmed it over yep. the summer, like July. Got the email back. Hey, uh, final edit came back. CW Network's excited. Your sure. your release date is September 17th. And I said, oh, wow. That's and I awesome. cried. I, I yeah. bawled out. I said, sure. I, I'm sorry. You know, that's all I could say was, I, yeah. I'm sorry. You know? I doubted. Because I doubted. You yeah. know, so... That's where I'm at now still, you know, and it's, but it's, you know, it's, it's again, you know, and then it's, it's getting that letting go of anxiety, letting go of control, mm. letting go of what could, you know, and just being okay with what is. Yeah. Because it <clears> seems <throat> like it then it limits you to like the possibility, right? Ooh, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. That's crazy. Chills, bro. I was like, what? Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's, I've been, like I said, I've been, I've been thankful, you know what I'm saying? I've been blessed, you know, yeah. I've not a runner and mm. you know i got featured on on nike running you know mm. i was on the app you know i mean <laughs> i've gotten free stuff to come just do running events you right. know what i'm saying and i've never been a runner i'm a swimmer and then i started pouring into swimming because god told me i'm about to i'm about to bless you here be mm. ready and i blew up from six peak covid peak covid i had six clients and i blew up to 25 to 30 clients Ooh. yeah during all, COVID. all out in LA. Yeah, all out in LA. Jeez, bro. Um, and then when I That's came awesome. here, you know, like we were talking about earlier, I did a tour. I did free swim lessons between LA, um, here, and then I went to Atlanta also. And you know, I just, I just wanted to give. You know, what I'm saying, and, and people still donated, but like it wasn't about that. It was right. just about I just want people to know that like I got you, I yeah. got us. You know what I'm saying? Until yeah. we find others, I got us. Yeah, I love that man. What's something that's been. Um like inspiration for you something that has caught your mind and it could be something so peculiar like the fit that somebody was wearing on instagram like push me to go you know do something and go buy something or whatever man like, what's something that's been in the back I, of your head i will say the one thing that holds on to my mind is a great prophet once said no already graduating you can live through anything if magic made it mm, and that is kanye cool. west on the song can't tell me nothing yeah that is probably one of my, I just got goosebumps. That, yeah. That's one of my favorite songs um, because it's kind of just like when people told me what I was doing was wrong, mm. when I got it, that song came on. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like when I, when I get a call back or if I get a phone call or an email saying, congratulations, you booked, that's the first, the first song I throw on every time because it's kind of just like, you can't tell me nothing. Like mm. you don't have power over me. You know what I'm saying? And that's all, that's like the back of my mind motivation. Um, yeah. I say he's a great prophet of music. Not, not <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, right, no. Right. Idolizations here. Right, but, uh, right. But yeah, like he's, yeah, it's unmatched. That's, that's peak for me. That's, that's peak unreal. Kanye. <laughs> Cause that's yeah. like, that's, that's <clears throat> genius right there. That's inspiring people like this. And I think he's done that continuously for sure. But they're, they're bro. Can't tell me nothing. And just that era just sits so well with me yeah you know what i'm saying like late graduation like being somebody that's like god's like hey i'm getting ready to send you back to school and i'm like come on bro like <laughs> i'm 30 now you know what i'm saying like you I'm about to go back to school but i see it now it's like i i jokingly say it but being real but like i i wouldn't have made it you know what i'm saying i would have just been in huge debt and if i would have gone somewhere i possibly would have been stuck because i would have been in in the same mindset of like, well, if I go home, it means I failed. Right. So I would have done so much to just cycle myself Ooh. through, you know, and now it's like, you're good now. You yeah. know, like you understand, you know, and again, retrospect perspective, I see it that like, okay, now I can handle these things. Now I have the, the mental capacity, the emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. and I'm still growing. I'm not saying I'm perfect, right, you know, and it's here. but you know, enlightened. Yeah. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like I got yeah. a, a couple and if not, I have people around me that I can call. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. The elements around me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it, bro. What do you, uh, are you able to share like where you're going? Where are you studying? Or I know there's some things people like to keep, keep close to the chest. What, uh, What's the next chapter going to look like, bro? Man, so one of my biggest things I've always wanted to do, and, and again, I feel like, I hope I feel like I'm doing <laughs> it right. Um, I want to go back to school and like really dive into like the theater side, the theater arts. Um, I feel like it's, it's the more I'm starting to see all the films that are coming out, they're all plays. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Denzel Washington has done a phenomenal job at bringing a lot of plays to life, you know, with, you know, the, the goat herself, Viola, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right next to him. From Fences, you know what I'm saying, to <clears throat> Ma Rainey, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I mean, Denzel wasn't attached to that. He might have been attached to that. 
let me not get all the credits mixed up. Back, yeah. But you know, rest in peace, Chadwick was in that one. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you know, we just had Macbeth come out, and so it's kind of just like I see this. I'm seeing this trend now where it's like all the plays are like we're gonna. It's it's like uh, a pull off from a play and things like that. So I want to go get classically trained. Yeah. Um. So when I approach things, you know, I understand what I'm doing because a lot of what I do is off class, and I've had a very very great coaching, you know, behind me when I first moved to LA and, you know, now, um, but I want to go back to school and really, you know, dive into that. But also I fell in love with, um, human interaction and sociology. Wow. So I really want to go and get my, um, like an undergrad in that, Mm -hmm. uh, that aspect of human behavior and, you know, why we do things, why do we interact? Like when you're uncomfortable, why do you get a nervous jitter? You know, why do you sweat, you know, profusively, you know, why do we, you know, why do dictators open doors the way they do and push right. people through versus, and you know, you know, the, the, the power struggle between humans. Right. right. Um, Cause I think that would not only help me in film, but it also helps me in life, you know, and easy having those two things still helps me be a better swim coach. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because as a swim coach, I put on an act. Mm-hmm. These kids sometimes they're not gonna remember my name. The parents, no disrespect to my parents. I love them. But in 30 years, I don't expect them to remember my name. I just hope that their kid, held on to what I put into them. Right. And that was to just dream and be imaginative. So mm. sometimes, you know, an airplane in the water, a boat in the water, right. cops and robbers in the water, like they're not going to remember that exact game, but they're going to remember to swim. Yeah. And so for me, I got to put on the act until they get it, until they figure it out. Exactly. Because then what I think that tends to happen is that they take those feelings and those emotions and then it's a butterfly effect. Yeah. And it, and it just grows into the next and then the next and then... You know what I'm saying? They take these things on. Being able to communicate, mm. being able to talk, being able to be, uh, you know, get positive reinforcements, be able to get like, um, not um, this or that. I forget what that word is. I'm blanking out right now. Like yeah. if you're given a, a ultimatum. Ultimatum. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Degree. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no. But uh, no, no. <laughs> an ultimatum. Like, I'm, not trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to give him an ultimatum. You <laughs> right, know what I'm right. saying? But like, hey, like, if we don't do this, like, we can't play today. You know what I'm saying? Or like, right. hey, like, Let's get this done so we can do this. And it just instills this communication. And, you know, like I get these phone calls, not phone calls a lot, but I get pictures and videos from my parents. Like he held his breath in the, in the bathtub, you know, like we went on, on, on a trip and like he swam across the swimming pool, you know what I'm saying? So he'd go up the diving board and right. he's the youngest one out of the, the swim group, you know what I'm saying? And things like that. And kids going off to high school and be like, Hey, we actually picked up swimming this year in high school. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, man, like. Just to have that That's effect, you know what I'm saying? Because a kid going from probably or possibly not wanting to do sports to like picking up a sport is bigger than the sport. It's it's you can cr- have a friendship that mm. you never would have had on the swim team right. if you never would have joined. So, That's crazy. Yeah. That's amazing, man. And then uh, then yeah, they can take that and keep going. That's nuts, bro. It's the Forrest Gump effect, you know. Yeah. No matter what Forrest wow. Gump did in his film, was it was. He took something from the the like the previous mm-hmm. into the future. Mm-hmm. So like everything he did was from the past, if that makes sense. Yeah. But oh. Like yeah, yeah, his yeah. love for uh, football, he mm-hmm. took into the navy or mm-hmm. the navy, the marines. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he always remembered was you know to always go get his friend and bring him out. And then when rest in peace, my man Bubba. You know when Bubba yeah, passed, yeah. he went on a shrimp boating, but he never forgot the things that he learned from Bubba and shrimping. Right. And then when he started running. It was always about, I'll never forget you, Janae, which right. he traveled all around the world to go get her. You know what I'm Peter. saying? So, right. my man Forrest was a genius, That's bro. That's amazing, man. Yeah. Dude, I need to go watch that movie again. It's, it's Dude. good. It's Dude, good. that's it's amazing, good. bro. So, what um what lessons did you take from your time in the Navy um, that kind of, that you keep uh, and kind of string through <clears throat> everything that, like the different ventures you're my in? My Forrest Gump different effect. chapters, yeah. Um, yeah. I would say, I would say... Stay in the present and don't stress about the future was a big one. Um, mm-hmm. Enjoying my time in the Navy. Take take those photos. And whatever season, you know, remove the word Navy and put in your own word. But right. um, take photos, you know, try new things while you have the opportunity, uh, the time, you know, in this place or at this present time with friends or, or strangers that you're going to make acquaintances. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a big one. Um, establish your tribe. Or establish your village. It's Huge, all about balance. Um, it's cool to have work friends. And I'm not saying don't be best friends with your work friends. But also 
try to build outside of that because the balance is what keeps you sane. I don't know how many times I could get off work and go complain to a friend and they wouldn't understand the why I'm complaining about like, man, we just flew five hour bags and then we had to do this and they're kind of just like, yeah. so you're upset. I'm like, yeah, you know, versus yeah. me going to somebody who's like, yeah, man. And then just hearing work all day right after work was compounding on it. Yeah. And, and then you go right back into work. Like, yeah. Uh. Yep. Um, so I would say surrounding yourself with a good village, yeah. um, friends, family, um, neighbors, you know, just knowing your neighbor, totally. you know, and having and establishing, establishing your village doesn't mean everybody has to be in the same hut. Um, mm. What I mean by that is you can have a village and they can be an acquaintance that you only go to to go out and eat. And then mm. you have the friends that you come over to your house and you have those deep combos. And then you have those friends that, you know, you just enjoy to go to to plays or you know to the bar with or the happy hours with or play video games with have right. have your different pockets but the, all the villagers don't have to be in one in hut. the same area yeah in the yeah, same area um, have your hut. different ripples um so enjoy the present establish your village um and honestly i mean i would just say the last one is just have faith or just have fun um i mean i know that's like the same as staying present but i just had I had fun, you know, when I look back and I'm just like, man, and I, I try to have fun more and more in whatever I'm doing because if I get a phone call right after this, it's like, hey, we you're moving to Atlanta to come shoot, you know, yeah. blank, 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 blank. Right. Next six weeks, I'm gone. You know, when I come back, it might not be the same setup anymore. So it's kind of like, well, while I was here, let me enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. Because then it becomes a missed opportunity. Yeah. Um, and Stressing that's always dangerous. Yeah. It's always dangerous, man. Um, that's beautiful, bro. Tell me about um, plant per se. Plant poppy. Plant poppy. So I became plant poppy (laughs) uh, right in the peak of COVID. I got my first plant. I got my first plant. She's not here with me, but as I sit next to a couple, um, I got my first plant in the middle of COVID, and it was like the first living organism Mm. I've had on my own. Mm. Like I've had a dog, but that's a family dog, you know? So we're not allowed to have dogs in our new apartment in L.A., it's a whole thing. That's so crap. plant poppy, her name was, Th- her, I named her Thrive. Mm-hmm. Um, because during that time, I wanted to see it thrive. I was like, I'm going to keep this plant alive. That's it. So I had the water bottle. I'm <laughs> rubbing on every leaf every yeah. day. And, and she's grown into three pots now. She's grown out of, she's in her third pot now. Um, mm-hmm. And then from there, you know, just growing. I've grown on to four other plants yeah um i propagated i couldn't even tell you what it is it was it was one leaf and now it's three um her name is clarity because she started in a clear vase mm. i have a snake plant her name is harmony because mm-hmm. she you know yeah, kind of wiggles um i have a zz that's her name is riri so it's riri the zz um because she shines and uh, you know what I'm saying? and then i have uh bro, a new bro, one bro. That our mutual friend, shout out yeah. to Shelby, she got me. Shout out Shelby. Uh, her, the plant's name is uh, Jeffrey Janae because it's mm. painted two different sides. And yeah. What I've learned through all of this is a lot of times, and I was explaining this to you, is like a plant, you might not see it grow immediately, um, but you still have to take care of it. And, you know, it, it's, it's really crazy to like take the progression photos. And so that's what I've learned the most about being plant poppy is, yeah. you know, you can like stress about like every week, like, did it grow? Did it grow? Did it grow? Did I grow? Did my bank account grow? You know, do they like me more? You know, am I getting the raise that I deserve? And it's kind of just like, you'll see it when it's time. Yeah. And sometimes you won't see it until you're in the next chapter. Exactly. So now being a plant poppy of five and keeping <laughs> five living plants alive, I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, I'm keeping five plants alive. That's insane fascinating <laughs> and it's so fascinating it's bro and dope. they're growing <laughs> and they're growing that's and nuts. they talk yeah, they like yeah. they droop they lift you know they yeah. turn colors and i think the biggest thing also is you know when you see one you see like a root pass so like you know it like turns yellow i'm i'm freaking out i'm on webmd i'm yeah. on plain md <laughs> yo, yo yo what's up what's going on it's we supposed good? to die you yeah. know and it's just like yeah. it, it's okay because the plant's still living but that season's done it's gone and that was like you know not to get like blowing. plant deep in the soil you know or, or root deep but exactly it was yeah yeah you know i love that man and it's like um you know it's kind of like caring it's not like caring for a child but i'm sure there's i mean there are parallels between that that kind of helps build that muscle and preparation bro yeah and and again like i feel like that's 
that's the season that I was in with, with teaching swimming is when I moved away, a lot of my friends in the military at the time were all young, mm-hmm. young, you know, big guys, whatever. I'm not that big. But, you know, I'm a little <laughs> big, but you know what I'm saying? Like there was some big dudes that I, I served with and like, yeah. you know, like everybody's figuring themselves <clears throat> out. So like, Again, like, I don't expect to be their uncles or the godfathers of them. So everybody back home here in Phoenix who's having kids, I'm not around them a mm-hmm. lot. So my chapter for infancy and playing with kids and, and learning how to communicate, have patience, intimacy, um, came with me teaching swimming. Yeah, I've had I've had one kid three and a half years, and he went from pool swimming to lake swimming and trying to get him in triathlons now as he's 15 years old now. Um, you know, and so I, I've seen it on every level, you know, like how to talk to kids who are used to just seeing their parents, how to motivate kids who don't know what motivation is, how to how to be with kids who are asking why, how to talk to kids who are literally going through puberty now. You know, it's like, I feel like an older brother and, and a young father, and I'm like, yeah. can't I can't lose it on them, you know what I'm saying? And now again, like with plants, it's, you know, like having parallels, like having a child, infant, because they can't talk. They're not like, I pooped, you know what I'm saying? They yeah. just look at you. Yeah. And they, you know, they you know, faces. their faces and same thing with plants. They just turn yellow sometimes or their leaves droop. And you're like, what's wrong? What's yeah. up? <laughs> so, you know, but yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Plant man. poppy life. You know what I'm saying? Father's Day's to. coming up. You got to get on it, bro. <laughs> you guys got to get on it. If you don't have a plant. I mean, How many it, plants it, do you have in here? Uh, four? Five. Cap. One, two, five, three, one, four, five. Four. And then propagating this, these two. There you go. See? Yeah, so it's like, I mean, it's fun. I got my first one when, when the office closed at the top of COVID. Um, there was like a bunch of plants in there. And uh, I just took that one because it was like, who, who's going to watch them? Do you name them? Uh, I don't. Hmm. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Just because, I don't know. It's just like allowing them to kind of just do their thing. And, um, you know, it's nice because I do, like I have my bottle, like my spray bottle and stuff too. And Man, like, you get it, bro. Like <laughs> what, what growth fertilizer can I use for them or, and everything. And I just got fertilizer journey. for the first time. It's crazy. Wild. <laughs> it it's changes wild. the whole It game, is bro. wild. Um, but I love it, man. And, uh, it's, it's just peaceful. And for me, a lot of what it is, is also routine. So being able to like lock in, like, Hey, I'm doing this every Sunday I'm spraying like every other morning and like just kind of being on that and, you know, walking around. The king of consistency, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. The king of consistency. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off like that, but he got me on the 75 strong, 75 hard. And I feel like he's on day 188 now. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? How has that been for you? I'm I'm turning the tables, baby. For sure, bro. uh, How has that been? Like, you know, like I know you you spoke on it throughout, you know, the, the vlog series throughout 75, but like. As of today, like, you know, like, what did you take away and, like, how do you continue to find what you enjoy about the consistency? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing is self-reflection. So, like, realizing what I liked from it, what I didn't like from it. And then once I came off, like, I was super hyped because I finished it. And it's like, this is this very clear thing that you completed, right? As I'm sure you probably get that with, you know, the triathlons and such. It's like, it's it's an achievement. I tried, guys. I really did try. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and so, you know, I, I, I went through a lot of like body dysmorphia because mm. I dropped like 50 pounds in 75 days, essentially. He's listening, y'all. And He's like, ready to be on somebody's beach. Okay. It's a trip. Dog. My man is ready. It's a trip. And so Isn't that crazy? it was like healthy, right? Like I was, I was eating well, eating my meals and like working out and such, drinking the water. Um, but it was very hard to wrap through this transition. And so coming out of it, I realized that, yeah, 75 hard is not sustainable um, in the long term. And so I have to find the systems and the routines that are sustainable to be able Mm. to upkeep healthy living. The yoga, the reading, you know what I'm saying? The gym, the spray bottles, the staying consistent. This man is always behind a camera. But I'm glad you're finding time (laughs) to put yourself in front, too. Thank you, brother. Because the artist is as important as the the director. Mm. Or the artist is as important as the director. So Mm -hmm. this is good, man. Yeah, man. Just trying to document. That's the biggest thing. Is is like I want to be able to... I mean, for me, a lot of it comes from enjoyment of seeing, you know, when we're doing family home videos. Like, I loved seeing, like, what my grandparents were up to. That's crazy. You know? Because yeah. my, my grandpa was vlogging. He, he had the, the camcorder. Hey, and the, leg- the legacy. It, Three generations it's behind the cams, nuts, baby. Dog. And That's so, dope. you know, I want to do that and be able to, to provide the same thing for my kids. And also try and build something and build brand and make some money, you know? 
You're doing really well on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, everybody eats. Yeah. Everybody eats. Just trying to build those systems up, bro. Hmm. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you for pulling up, bro. Um, Any last closing words for the folks? Anything you want to leave them with um, to to help better themselves? Little nuggets. (laughs) Exercise your First Amendment. Never forget your voice is the most important thing that you have. The deepest wallet you have is as great as the person that you think has more, and that's time. And the third thing is have fun. Enjoy what you do. Find enjoyment in what you do. If you hate going to work, laugh at the things you can. Go watch Abbott Elementary. Shameless plug, hilarious TV show. They hate their jobs, but they love what they do. You know what I'm saying? So I would say those three things, man. Just just continue to say it loud. You know what I'm saying? Shameless love. I love it, bro. Where uh, where can they find you? Where they can they where what can oh, they no. <laughs> conveniently placed. Conveniently right placed in the First man. Amendment. Right, um right. No, but yeah, I uh I started up a brand <laughs> called Say It Loud, um, yeah. and that has grown into uh, a website and a way for people to find me on the podcasting side, right. um things I things I do in the community. And also swimming lessons. So that's sayitloudmedia.org. Um, me personally, I'm always open to talk to people. I love to talk. I love to talk. I love to let people talk, yeah. but I love to talk. Um, and that's Boogie, B-O-O-G-I-E-D-E-B-E-A-S-T. It's French instead of the. I thought the was too boring in the seventh grade when I created this. That's my original gamer tag is Boogie oh, the Beast. Man. Actually, it's been Gorilla Smurf. Boogie the Beast was my AOL name. Uh, and I've been with them, yeah. I've been with it ever That's since. That's comedy. Um, but yeah. yeah, Boogie the Beast, yeah. and then sayaloudmedia.org. Um, but yeah, just remember, man, just your voice is important. Time is the most valuable thing we have, and have fun while you got it. Always, bro. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, man. Thank you, brother. Hey, my man. Thank hey. You, you. Shout out to Ski. Hey, yo, Ski, where'd you get that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, bro. Well, oh, man. Yeah, man. With that, I uh, just want to say thank you to you guys for, for tuning in, tapping in, and make sure you guys go follow the homie. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and share with your mama, your pops, your cousin, auntie, uncle, and the owner of the store next door to you. So we appreciate you guys. Thanks for taking the time. Y'all be blessed. Peace out. What's up, bro? That was fun. That was fun. That was good.